Greetings, wonderful well beings. I'm Key. Welcome back to the channel, guys. So today I wanted to talk about um, something I've been seeing a lot lately about, you know, the black man protecting the black woman. I don't know what's going on, but I see it, it's going around a lot, a lot of different posts, you know, about the black man protecting the black woman. And I just wanted to speak on that real quick because it's just really been weighing on me heavy, like <laughs> just seeing all these posts. And um, I just want to take it back real quick for a split second to when we were enslaved and the black man could not protect us. He he was not the one that we looked for for protection. We had to rely on another man for leadership, for clothing, shelter, food, survival. OK, so the black man was not able to protect us during for 400 years. So imagine that trauma. This this stuff stays with us. So not only that, the black man suffered trauma of feeling inadequate, worthless, not able to protect him, himself or his family. So think about all these really deep traumas that we have of generations. This stuff is in our DNA <laughs> of generations of trauma. And now everybody's like, oh yeah, the black man uh, needs to protect the black woman, which I totally agree. But we have to really get down to the root of the problem and really address the elephant in the room. Like how are we really gonna get back to loving and respecting each other? Like what is it really gonna take? And not a lot of people wanna hear this, I already know, but women have suffered some horrific, horrific trauma that we still carry in our DNA from sexual sexual trauma, from the, the, the man that we had to rely on instead of the black man. We had to rely on another man and that same man was the same one that raped us, killed us, beat us, murder us, okay? Think about that. Not only that, black men suffered at the hand as well with there were perverted things done to the black man and sexual traumas happening to them as well. So we both have deep sexual trauma from a very sick, perverted individuals that, that, that was doing this to us. So we in turn pretty much have adopted the sickness in reality. And a lot of us like don't want to really touch on a sex subject and I find myself like, you know, back and forth with it too. Like, oh, it's just sex. Like, no, we need to stop lying to ourselves. Let's stop being in denial. Let's be real about it. Sex is probably the number one addiction in this country. Probably the number one <laughs> in, in definitely the black community because we don't think it's serious. We don't, we don't think we should have to wait till marriage. Like these days, you know, people don't like, oh, we ain't gotta wait till marriage. Like people really free out here now, like taking sex as a joke when it's really sacred, when you you know it is. I ain't even have, I don't have to even like go into it. The peop people I'm speaking to right now know how sacred sex is really supposed to be. But some of us are laid up right now, some women with a man who wouldn't even protect us, let alone commit to us, not, none of that. And we're still giving sex to them. And we're like, oh, oh, okay. And then like the spiritual community now, like with the, oh, sex magic, sex rituals. I'm gonna just use him for some sex magic. Let's be real. It's, it's way deeper than that. It's some traumas that we have to heal and we need to take our time to heal it. We need to really take a step back. And the only way it's gonna happen is if we really take our time with sex, stop rushing into sex. Really, I'm not, I would say get married, but even if you're not into marriage, a committed partnership with a sacred partner who is God sent, who you know is sacred and is good for your womb. We have some deep, deep traumas stored in our wombs and our DNA as black women. And I know how much we wanna heal our men. We do, we wanna give them what they want. 
We want to support them. We, we want to be there for them, but we can't keep sacrificing ourselves. We can't keep, <laughs> I ain't going to get much. We can't keep acting like it, it, it doesn't exist. This trauma that we know we feel, we know we feel it. And we have to stop acting like it, it, it doesn't exist. And it's going to start with us actually learning how to have platonic relationships with each other. We have to love each other without trying to get sex out of each other. Actually learn how to be self-disciplined and have self-control. If you can't, if you don't have sexual discipline or sexual control within yourself, then it's a lose-lose. The, the relationship is going nowhere. So starting it off rushing into sex is, is, is just, is going nowhere. Like, and people think it's okay and, and want to make excuses for it. It's time we stop being in denial and be real with ourselves and really sit back and ask ourselves these really deep questions. Like, why can't I, why can't I control my sexual desires? Why do I need it all the time? What, what, what's really going on? And when you really go back and look at it, you'll see that we have some deep sexual traumas. We need to get it together. I'm serious. Like, how are we going to ever be able to heal each other and love each other until we can respect that, that fact? Just respect that fact. Women, we're going to have to be the first ones. We, we have to, we, we're the ones who have to set the boundaries. We have to set the boundaries. And I'm speaking to myself too. We have to set the boundaries and not be trying to rush. Oh, he's the one. Oh yeah. Like take your time. What's the rush? What is the rush? What's the rush? And we're going to need our men to understand. We're going to need our men to understand this movement because it's a movement and, and, and just understand with love and respect us and be friends with us, L learn how to not want us sexually. We've been heavily perverted sexually in this country. Let's be real about it. Let's be real about it. Like we have to get to a point where we can just love each other and, and, and have really close relationships with each other without it being sexual. And when that time comes, when we, when, we, when we really have healed, God will send us the right person. We will, we will be matched with, with a great person that we can have sex with and do all these things with. But the truth is, it's a lot of sexual traumas. And I'm just seeing it like, not just, you know, slavery. Uh, just <sighs> looking at this generation, just this generation, a lot of people have been sexually molested as children, a lot of just disgusting, vile things when it comes to sex. And I know with the, because I'm a woman and I've had some traumatic sexual things happen to me, but it's just not me. It's, it's, it's generational stuff that I feel in my blood. It's just not me. And I, men and women feel it. And maybe we even run to sex to try to feel that void of, of that pain that we really feel when it comes from sex. Like even if a man wasn't, you know, raped or molested sexually, if his mother was, she, she has that in her DNA and, and that's going to be passed on to him. So he has that trauma to, through, through his mother. Like, that's where it has to start. And we, we need to start really talking about solutions. How are we going to really get the black man to want to protect us? We have to really stand up and be that, be that woman that they, they really want us to be. Because you see it out here. You see it everywhere where men are really tired of the, the thoughts. They want to praise them all day on, um, you know, videos and stuff. But in reality, they don't want a woman like that. So we really need to start giving them what they want because this is the only way we're going to heal. This is the only way we're going to 
be able to really love and respect each other if we stop looking at each other as sexual objects. And I feel like somebody had to speak on it. More people need to speak on this because it's like swept under the rug. Like, oh, no, it's just sex. And I get it. A lot of men especially don't want to don't want to deal with that. Nah, nah, shorty. Nah, you ain't you ain't. You ain't trying to, you ain't trying to do it. Ah, uh, nah, nah. And women too. Some of us be thirsty too. Like it's time, man. It's really time to look at the real elephant in the room, the big elephant in the room that nobody don't want to address. And how are we really going to heal and love and protect each other? How are we going to get there? We can't by, by continuing to objectify each other and, and be, and carry on the, the slave master's mentality, perverted mentality. We can't. So <laughs> I just wanted to just put that out there because it's, it's real. It's real. And, and you know it. We know it. And I just wish much healing <laughs> for our community, for our people. Like we have some real sicknesses that we have to heal from. And we can't heal from it by continuing to do the same the same things that's insanity to, to continue to do the same patterns you know so it's going to start with that it's really going to have to start with that we we need to understand each other and be with each other during this time like we need more people to be around that is going to uh live a life of celibacy and live a life of of waiting and you know just being friends with the opposite sex and like waiting till you're in a real partnership like like let's let's be honest okay especially people who say they want to get married one day if it's not healed how is it really gonna even work out um but i digress so that's all i wanted to share with you guys and um leave any comments uh Whatever you guys want to say. Um, and I love you all. And I um, wish you much healing. And um, yeah, we want a wellness. You already know. Put your crowns on and keep your crowns on. Because we winning and we healing. Okay? I love y'all. Peace.